We're here to talk about a poem by Patrick Rosal, and it's called Uptown Ode that ends on an ode to the machete. Uh, it's from a book of poems that's published in 2016 called Brooklyn Antediluvian. It's actually an all of mod po at, at least the time of this recording, the most contemporary poem that we're talking about. It's, it's a brand new poem. Um, Patrick Rosal has written other books, has published other books. One is called Bone Shepherds, and this one has won a number of prizes. It's a really great book. It's a recent book. I think it's 2011, maybe. I'll check that to be sure. Maybe 2011, I was right. And the other one, American Kundaman. And a Kundaman is, refers to a genre of love, of love poem that is written in Tagalog in the Philippines. And so what he's done here is he's taken it into English and he's varied it, so it's a series of love poems. In Brooklyn Ante Bolivian, we encounter this poem which is divided distinctly into two parts. So we'll, we'll talk about those two parts. But the first part is written in a kind of frenetic, and I think I would say, um, not happy, but ecstatic, excited, energetic, present tense. So can anyone, maybe Connie, just say in the most basic way what you think is literally going on? What is the scene? What's the narrative? What con is it day or night? Is it mm -hmm. Tuesday morning or is it Friday night? Um, it could be either of those days, um, probably towards the night. Um, there's traveling going on. Um, the author or the narrator and Willie are just you know, going across the city, across the bridge. Um, to a bar, dancing. Mm -hmm. um, there is that frenetic energy. Um, a lot. Is of, it just the speaker and Willie? Um, it seems like people are joining them or coming in. I think in Orlando out. has joined them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and there's reference to I mean what they're drinking, how, what they're listening to. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Kamar, do we know where they are? Um, East Side, Franklin and Fulton. I know. Mm -hmm. um, Tito Puente um, was from Spanish Harlem, so maybe... El Barrio. El, El Barrio, yeah. So, so that's AKA Spanish mm -hmm. Harlem Spanish or East Harlem. Harlem. Yeah. yeah. So they're going uptown, it looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, Tito yeah. Puente gives us some context in terms of music and style. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Carlos? Uh, he's a famous percussionist, I think. No? Yeah, he's well, he's a, a Latin jazz Latin composer. Latin yeah, uh-huh. And a mambo musician, mm -hmm. yeah, very very well known, and and it's a throwback for these young people to be sort of referring to him. Kamara, I think I cut you off. Where else? So we know we. What city is this? We didn't actually say. New York that. City. It's New York. Mm -hmm. Lily, we've got a, a um, an energetic present tense. Men going dancing. It, this must remind you of another poetics, an earlier <laughs> poetics. Yes. Um, it, uh, yes, it sounds like Frank O'Hara's The Old Place. Mm -hmm. um, at the Old Place, the yeah, old place. in particular. But what more generally about O'Hara do you see here? Um, I think the, we follow uh, one speak, it's sort of like if you were on a TV show, like we track behind one speaker as he moves through a crowd of lots of people and mm -hmm. um, an energetic night out and, um, we're not going any particular place. We're kind of just weaving in and out as though we were at a party behind one person's shoulder. Mm -hmm. And Anna, uh, um, it's it's not even five past midnight in El Barrio and I'm nodding to Jibo spinning one ill cut after another. Well, there's another O'Hara poem that we encounter in Modpo that this reminds you of, don't you think? Well, it's got that kind of classic O'Hara, New York school, I do this, I do that kind of style. There it um, does, reminds yeah. me of the beginning of um, the Day Lady Died. Or even the end. Or, or the, the end, nightclub. sure. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. gosh, like the whole poem. I mean, it, it's, yeah. this, it's this kind of motion sort of through the city, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I think what, what uh, Rosal's bringing to this is there's, like, I know Harris is sort of anti-narrative, but he's, but Rosal kind of updates that anti-narrative with the kind of simultaneity. Like, these things are all happening at once, where he mm. says, you know, don't take three minutes for me and Will to jump on the dance floor or post up at the bar sipping on Barlito or to tap on my glass. You know, mm -hmm. he's like, he's think the, the or instead of the and that O'Hara yeah. would use makes these, all these things kind of happen with this like charged simultaneous energy. Okay. Carlos, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask an obvious question, but I think okay. it's really important. How else is Patrick Rosal being different from 
This is a New York poem. It's in New York, but it's a different New York from ha Frank O'Hara's New York, no? Yeah, well, it's very textured by immigrant culture. And it has such a... I mean, Frank O'Hara can be very musical, but I think that this poem has such a sonic quality to it and such a such a condensed heated rhythm that I think is, is that different. almost matches the different kind of music that he's mm -hmm. referring to in 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 the poem at the old place um, uh, O'Hara and his male friends leave one bar to go to another and their um, Button, uh, one of his friends who's nicknamed Button, Lindy's with me in that poem. So Frank and Button are Lindying. Well, there's not a lot of Lindying here. <laughs> and, so the, and so Kamara, I know that you're really interested in sound studies and, 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 and rhythm of speech mm -hmm. and performance. Do you want to say something about the f performance of the first part to follow what Carlos just said about the music? Um, well, when, when we listen to it, it's very... Ba -da -da, ba -da -da, ba -da -da. Um, it sounds almost like it's a drum actually like his vote his voice sounds like a drum and the the words going out I was just underlining while he was saying some of the words that stuck out to me the verb specifically like the flies from Franklin the zip up the east side the knocking to Esther Williams um, not only it was the performance very um, percussion yeah percussive percussive mm -hmm. um but the language itself um especially yeah. the verbs so there's um, very little in the way of i ams the i am yeah. does da dum this is um up the east side right over the bridge up the east side so we get we get much more of a, a series of unstressed syllables and then we lead to some beats so it's like it's almost scored by tito puente in a way um tight. yeah it's very right, tight exactly. yeah so, Connie, do you want to add to that before we get to the end of the, sec the first section to figure out where the poem's going to go? Do you want to add anything? Yeah, sure, just the rhythm of the dancing that um, all of you mentioned, sort of, um, but here it's sort of culturally marked, um, mm -hmm. and it seems almost, I mean, you have in the, in the next section, um, which we're about to get to, you, the, you have the rite and the act, and in the end, another kind of ritual, which recalls this sort of dancing ritual as a way of recovering maybe um, a rhythm or another poetic mode or even recovering a kind of diasporic, diasporic moment. Yeah, so combining okay. Carlos's mention of one of the many differences between this and O'Hara, uh, namely that this uses the immigrant American experience, and Connie's mention of the importance of that, uh, the sense of diaspora leading, leading us to the next point. It's, it goes to a place, I mean it metaphorically, it goes to the Philippines, um, it goes to a place poetically that O'Hara hasn't been. So it goes, it moves the New York school style forward, you might want to say. Um, so, yeah, okay, so can we push a little further on your mention? Uh, you said immigrant, but there's some more specificity here yeah. to some of the dual lingual, lingual words. Right? When I, sorry, when I first read the poem, um, I had no idea about the author's background, so when I read the first section, I thought, this is a Latin American poem. Mm -hmm. um, just given all the references, I mean, even getting into the next part, but cascara, comi cascara is a skull, so I'm imagining like drinking out of this like plastic skull almost, or como se dice, we have Prada Bambula, there's the the accents and of course, the mention of Tito so Puente. So you thought, and, Latin, Latin and, and Tito Puente, so you mm -hmm. thought this is, these are Latin American Latin trends. Latin. Yeah. We don't know, in fact. We find out that the speaker is making mm -hmm. a pilgrimage back to the Philippines. So we're assuming, yeah. and we know of Patrick Rosal, that his family is Filipino. So, but we didn't know that. So mm -hmm. what, can, is there a way, is there a, so we have a general sense of the importance of Spanish mm -hmm. culture and yeah. the Filipinos' relationship with Spanish is complicated, but anything else to add? I mean, Connie, you said diaspora. Um, is, that, is that apparent in the first section? Well, I think um, because in maybe the New York School um, poetics, the demotic language and the reference to the objects is really important. Here, even more so, maybe they seem like artifacts or a way to connect to something that's lost, and there's that, I think, a sense of going back or a sense of, um, you know, the importance of these objects mm -hmm. that we get here. Um, Lily and Kamara, can we add 
one more factor before we go to the next section, um, which is there's a, there's O'Hara-like homosociality here. These are these are guys who are dancing with each other, just as in O'Hara's at the old place. Anything to say of significance about that, Lily? You first. Um, well, we get the at the very end of this section. Um, he goes from calling, I'm assuming it's the same person, yeah. calling his friend, or maybe it's actually his brother, um, Willie, to Dear Brother Will, all capitalized. So we mm -hmm. um, could interpret that a, a few different ways. Like, mm -hmm. the all capitalizations makes it seem like this is a title that he holds. Yeah. Um, or it could, possibly it could mean he calls him by uh, a name that he translated to English as Dear Brother Will, all caps, mm -hmm. or maybe mm -hmm. like a term of endearment mm -hmm. that wouldn't translate, something like that. Um, but like very clearly underscoring um, that this uh, statement that Dear Brother Will is about to make isn't to be taken lightly. Like it's mm -hmm. very, it is dear, just mm -hmm. like the relationship that they have with each other. And Kamara Jibo, you know, this is, this is a classic modern poetic device where we get in media race into a, a set of relationships and it isn't spelled out to us who Jibo is, but you can just see it. Some friend, they just call him Jibo because he's just Jibo. Um, and uh, 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 Willie daps up Orlando, the, the friendly gesture of greeting, you know, a, a, a handshake that is associated with U.S. communities of color in the 60s and 70s and then becomes more generalized. So mm -hmm. there's some dap. So do you want to say anything about how these men relate to each other and is it of interest? Um, yeah, I just... I, I love the line, the rhythm, brada bam, oh, I can't say it correctly, but brada bambula to watch the dip and sway of this motley flock. Um, this, this is a motley flock. This is a motley <laughs> flock of um, men who may be from different backgrounds but share this like musical rhythm, yeah. fun lifestyle together. Yeah. Um, so let's just assume that Lily is right about Will, who has maybe a special relationship, because the others may be, in fact, they may be from all um, parts of yeah. what makes up the El Barrio, what makes up Spanish Harlem, Latin American, Central American, Filipino, but Brother Will seems to have a special thing he wants to say as a result of this great experience that the Motley flock is having. And Anna, what, how would you paraphrase that? We are all trying to get home, good luck. Mm. <laughs> it's a big, I mean, I think several of us should have a shot at this, but what do you think? What, take a shot. Well, I guess I would I would say it's the the kind of push and pull of that immigrant experience of the places where you can sort of maintain your contact to your culture and tradition and yet mm -hmm. also participate in in being part of the motley flock. Mm -hmm. um, right. So Stay. maybe like his him saying this and especially in um, if you listen to the reading, you know he really like this is the moment this is the gravitas moment really yes. which is stands in such a wonderful contrast to the energy that we were talking about at the beginning yes. of this discussion yes that makes you sort of pause and think about actually what that what that struggle or what that i mean i guess sometimes it's a struggle maybe sometimes it's it can be tremendously um kind of empowering yeah you know existing with one foot in each yes well, let, I, I want actually to go around, starting with what Anna just said, go around and give everybody a shot at saying what is being said. It's very powerful. Um, I'll just add that if this poem is an analog to O'Hara's At the Old Place, it might not be, and we can ask Patrick Rosala. There's, this is, this, the analog to this statement, which is whispered from one person to the next, it comes at the beginning of that poem, and that's one of O'Hara's friend across the bar saying, let's, let's, let's beat this place, let's go to the old place, which is said with lips. You know, it's just, okay. And here it's in a way, Will leaning over and saying, well, not let's go to another bar where we can dance, but, but I think we are in another place, or I think we all have an urge to go somewhere else. So, um, Carlos, do yeah. you, want, you want to paraphrase that? We'll go around and get every, give everybody a chance. Yeah, I think um, I'm going to jump ahead briefly when he uses the word duende. It's really appropriate to this poem. Can you um, explain? So duende, I think, has a couple of different meanings depending on how you learn about it. But it's either like the, the spirituality of a place, a landscape, um, which comes from, I think, primarily Latin culture or kind of the 
spirituality or, or sense of aura in a, in a piece of art, the poetic landscape or artistic landscape. Mm. And there's so many layers in this poem because there's the poetic landscape of the poem and the duende that we're sort of reading, and then there's this kind that these people are sort of trying to create in this dense, heated moment of music and kind of connecting. And but far away from some origin. And far away from their origins, which is another landscape they're sort of trying to travel to. To in reproduce this. it in the motley flock. Yeah. Right. But then that inevitably makes Will think, mm -hmm. wait a minute, what we're really doing here is we're all trying to get yeah. home. And it almost, yeah. th I mean, they're all potentially from different cultures, but like Connie was saying, there are these um, or sort of like what you were saying, there are these objects that stick out like artifacts that, is, you know, and we'll get to the machete later, that have connections between cultures and mm -hmm. this kind of like uh, coming together. Great. Connie, you want to um, add anything to a paraphrase of that powerful line? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think you gesture towards this with your reference to the uh, O'Hara poem, we are all trying to get home, as in away from this this bar or this particular bar, but also the more you know significant or heavier mention of home, as in we're all trying to get home because we're not here yet, either in this motley flock or this particular place, and we're trying to recover that in a way. And then it's also funny on the page where uh, home is aligned with the next uh, segment or the next ode and is aligned with allow me to translate as in anticipating the distance between uh, this home that the speaker or Willie um, is experiencing or wants to experience and the reader's experience of what home is and this requires some sort of translation. Nice, very good. Lily, you want to add anything? Yeah, um, I think um, it's interesting like because in the just the reality of this scene they're coming from from Brooklyn or somewhere like much f um, uh, further south at Franklin and Fulton so like they have traveled a long way to get to where they are so in the scene it could have been sort of like a confusing moment like maybe Willie is actually saying like it's t it's time to go home it's too late the yeah L's and not the book is called Brooklyn Antediluvian so yeah um so it could be interpreted so it's it's not such a um it, it works well with the concept of translation, I guess is what I'm trying to say, because it's not such a grand statement that it's really out of place. It's like a statement that the language of it fits in the scene, mm -hmm. um, but also has really deep meaning and implication like simultaneously at the same time. Mm. Yeah, great. Kamara, anything to add? Yeah. Um, you like this line, don't you? I like this line. I think that, um, what? okay, I love that it's, we are all trying to get home, as in it's like a simultaneous process, as in like while all of this is happening, they are still trying to find home in some type of area, mm -hmm. that this isn't just like a fun joy ride throughout the city, which it is, but it's also a sort of a, a search and a journey for some part of um, the homeland, wherever that might be. I loved what you were talking about with like the diasporic artifacts and things like that. I think. Where, wherever their home might be for the individuals, they're all sort of searching for it in this fun journey. Mm -hmm. And I think it um, says a lot about um, an immigrant experience in America, like searching, trying to be this like American citizen while also trying to find artifacts of home. Mm -hmm. 